Hey everyone, it's Monday. It's time for another Automotive Monday here in the Automotive Department at Sinclair Community College. My name is Troy Singleton and welcome back. We're going to bring you another series of videos. We appreciate you watching our high performance build, but we're going to bring it back and talk to you, the community, about what's going on here in the Automotive Department and anything that we can help you with automotive wise. And today we're going to talk about the cooling system. And I'm here with my esteemed colleague, Justin Morgan, and we have a special guest, Delaney. Hi, I'm Delaney Adams and I'm a student here at Sinclair and I am studying visual communications. As someone who doesn't have any experience working on cars, I'm excited to be here today to learn a little bit more. And we're glad to have you here and we're ready to get started. So it's that time of the season again where winter's right around the corner and we're going to talk a little bit today about automotive cooling systems and how you as a consumer can check this. And some of you out there in our automotive land uh, might be a little bit apprehensive about doing some of these checks yourself. So that way hopefully as you a consumer out there don't feel nearly as worried about doing this yourself when you're at home. And so we're going to talk a little bit about why you need to check your cooling systems. With freezing temperatures coming up and uh, below uh, 32 degrees, of course, we know that our water will freeze. But we have those really bad cold snaps. And in some cases, the coolant inside our engine, if not maintained well, will freeze. And so today, we're going to do some checks on why you should check your cooling system. We're going to show you some uh, affordable tools that you can use. Some of the tools we'll show you as well as what we use in our service industry. And then we're going to talk about maybe some of the maintenance tips that you guys can do out there and why you'd want to contact your local shop. So let's take a look at some of our tools and some of our components. So one of the main things that we're going to talk about today is how to test coolant. Specifically, what we want to talk about is how to test the freezing point of the coolant and also the mixture of water to coolant. So some of the, the tools that we use in our automotive service industry, there's a variety of different tools that we can use. We're going to show you some affordable pieces and some that we use in the automotive industry and our technicians uh, use every day. One of the first things that can be bought at a local parts store is uh, test strips. This usually shows us our pH level, it also shows us our mixture, and it will also show us um, our freezing point. And so that's a very nice tool to use. We actually use those so we can show our customers where they're at pH level to show when it's time to maintain coolant. Another nice tool that we use that is a very accurate tool is called a refractometer. Now this tool is a little bit more expensive, so as a consumer I don't expect you guys to go out there and purchase this, but this is a nice tool that we also use to check a similar stuff. So freezing point, or we'll also check the mixture as well. The last tool is the tool that we're going to be using today. Now, it's not necessarily the most accurate tool, but it's called a hydrometer, or sometimes called an antifreeze tester. And we're going to use this because you can purchase this for basically $10 or less at your local parts store. And these are fairly accurate, and we can get a good idea on whether we need to service our cooling system and whether it's time or not to take it to your local technician or your local repair shop. So again, uh, we have test strips. We have our refractometer, probably two of the more accurate tools. And then, of course, we also have our um, antifreeze tester. And the main thing that you can always think about about is you know why would we replace coolant and some of that stuff is for degradation of the cooling system and so what I mean by that is if we don't service our cooling system we can have erosion and those inhibitors that are inside the system start to break down and so we want to make sure that we have those maintenance schedules laid out there and so if I want to take a second here to show you this is this is a water pump or a coolant pump that you may have heard and they have these impellers that basically bring coolant in and then supply it through the engine to keep your engine cooled and maintained at a certain temperature this is a failed pump, but you can see here on the fins of basically what it should like, look like. This is a pump that has had severe neglect and it shows erosion and there's no fins left on here. And so this pump would actually not pump and cause an overheating concern. But this is most likely caused by a system that was never serviced or not serviced regularly. So this is what we're trying to prevent in your cooling system and those costly repair bills that no consumer wants out there. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. In addition to that, we have a couple different types of coolants. We have on the market our typical concentrate, which is 100% antifreeze or coolant. Now, which one should you buy? There are all size or one size fits all coolants out there on the market. And you can use those in a pinch if you need to top off coolant. It is my professional recommendation that you would use the coolant that's recommended for the vehicle. So consult your owner's manuals on that. However, we also have a pre-mix 50-50 mixture. Now, I know some of you out there in automotive land are saying, well, why would I want to pay for water if it's 50-50, 50% 50 50 coolant or antifreeze to 50% water? That's a good question. Sometimes you might be feeling that you're charged the same, but you're paying for water. The difference is, here we have vehicles that need to last 100,000 miles under warranty, and the water 
is hardness changes all over the nation. So those components to last, and we use water, of course, from the well, from the city, wherever, have different impurities. And what changes that concentrate sometimes is those water impurities. So it's recommended that this 50-50 mixture is a good idea to use on new cars today and not just using your regular tap water. If you're going to use water, I would recommend using something like a distilled water or something that you have that's deionized at your local grocery store. All right, so before we bring Delaney into our picture to help us with this, I want to talk a little bit about some uh, precautions before we start this. First off, if this engine is hot, we want to make sure that we wait an extended amount of time before that way the engine can cool. Because by releasing this pressure cap, we can actually have the coolant boil or the water boil onto us and of course cause uh, harm to ourselves. So we want to make sure that this cap, of course, is basically not warm to the touch and should be at room temperature. If you're not sure, I would recommend waiting five to six or several hours basically to ensure that is not the case. If you're unsure, the one thing I would definitely recommend is eyewear, uh, gloves, and um, a rag to put over this. In this case, this car has been sitting out um, all day, and so we're gonna be good to go whenever we do this service. In addition to this, in some cases, you might have a radiator cap and a surge tank, an overflow tank. It's always my recommendation that you would pull your coolant from the radiator, radiator cap and not your surge tank, and here's why. The main thing is, is someone might have, uh, have topped this vehicle off previous to you and used water or concentrated coolant. So if you were to go straight into the overflow, you might not be getting an accurate reading. The coolant in the radiator, however, is definitely being uh, throughout the coolant flow through the system. And so this is probably the most accurate spot to go ahead and check your coolant whenever you're doing this. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. We're going to get prepared and get ready to go. And what we'll do is you're going to basically push it down with your pressure. Just push pressure down and then you're going to turn it and turn it until it stops. We're gonna, you're going to just keep turning until it won't go anymore and it just picks up. Okay? okay. So it's like basically kind of like a quarter turn or probably more like 180 if I was to guess, isn't it? 180. Okay. So you're going to push it down, turn it, and then you got to push it down again. Okay? So what Delaney did to remove this basically, she had to push down and turn it about 180 degrees to release the locking tangs on this mechanism and to release the tension on the spring. So it takes a little bit of pressure, you push down, you turn it 180 degrees on this style of cap. Your cap may be different, so if you can, take a look out there. Some of them just unthread, but if you need to, you might want to consult your owner's manual to see how you actually remove your radiator cap. All right, so this is our hydrometer. This tool can be purchased about for about $10 approximately at any local parts store. And the way it works is it's actually going to use specific gravity to check our coolant to water ratio. So we're going to be able to check our freezing point. That's really what we're worried about here in the winter. We're also going to be able to get a nice visual inspection to see if there's any rust or to see if the color is going away of the coolant. So it's going to kind of give us an idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Delaney squeeze this bulb. We're going to insert it down into the radiator neck. She's then going to release the bulb. That's going to draw the coolant up into the tester. We're going to try to get it up to the fill line that's indicated here on the hydrometer. And then we're going to pinch the hose off to make sure that we don't lose any due to gravity. And we're going to then watch and check our freezing point on this hydrometer. So let's go ahead, Delaney. So I'm going to stick this down in here. Yep. And I'm going to squeeze, squeeze the bulb. That's correct. Yep. And, and let, it let it go slowly. until the coolant gets as far up as it's go gonna get. And then we're gonna squeeze off the end. And that's what we have. Cool. All right, so a few things we're gonna look at here on Delaney's sample is, A, we're gonna look at the freezing point. Uh, this is for ethylene glycol. A couple things you want to note is make sure it's all the way up to the top level. There's a line usually that indicates fill. We also want to make sure that we hold it basically level whenever we're going to check our measurement. So we're going to take a look at that specifically here in a second. The other thing is we can actually do a visual inspection of what our coolant looks like. So if there's any sediment, heavy amounts of sediment or rust, and we're close to our interval for recommended uh, change, then this would be a time where we go ahead and do that. And even if it has some sediment and rust and it's not to our interval and this car's got some mileage, I'd go ahead and recommend changing your service. Nothing's going to hurt uh, doing that too soon. So in some extremer climates, we might want this to be closer to like negative 40, negative 50. But 
In our case, if it was at zero degrees Fahrenheit, the concern that you could have is that coolant and water mixture could actually freeze. And in this case, you could actually crack a cylinder head or a block, and that is catastrophic failure. And that can be anywhere from a three to $8,000 fix approximately to have that service. So it's important that you have your cooling system service for the reason I just mentioned, for good maintenance to keep stuff like failures of water pumps, heater cores, and stuff like that. It's a very good idea to keep this service uh, as your recommended service. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and dispose of our coolant. We could either put that down at an appropriate uh, uh, recycling place, or what we're gonna do is just go ahead and put our coolant right back into our radiator neck. So go ahead, Delaney. Go ahead and you will use gravity to drop that right back down in there. Perfect. And if need be, we can squeeze that a little bit slowly. Perfect. Okay, good. So now we're going to have Delaney put the cap back on, and let's go ahead and do that. Good. All right, so this is a quick, easy consumer way to check your cooling system. We appreciate Delaney coming over here and helping us out today. Thank you guys for having me here today. I've learned a lot, had a lot of fun, and I can't wait to come back. We hope to have her back on some more Automotive uh, Monday Facebook videos. And Troy's going to leave us with some information here to follow up if uh, any of you guys are out there interested in our automotive program. Hey, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for being with us. Please leave your comments below. Please like our videos. Please share our videos. Now, again, if you're interested in the automotive program, come see us. We actually have an open house next Thursday evening from 630 to 830 here in Building 20. Please RSVP uh, with Mr. Morgan. Uh, that phone number is 937-512-2513. And from here, all of us from here in the automotive department, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.